Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, my name is Mr. Cobalt and in the last video in part one I was explaining like what the polyatomic ions are and um, how to memorize them. And uh, just to recap a little bit, the, the polyatomic ions are called polyatomic because they have more than one atom. So before this, um, if you only have an ion that is made up of one atom or one kind of atom, um, uh, one atom is going to have a charge that's going to be a monatomic ion. So like, for example, you had the um, phosphide ion with a three negative, or you had the chloride ion with one negative. Those are monatomic ions. The polyatomic ion, as the name suggests, it has more than one atom, right? So all of these are polyatomic because they have more than one atom. And the overall uh, molecule, if you will, has a charge on it. So instead of charged atoms, you have charged molecules, right? More than one um, atom bonded together, right? So that's where the, that's what we mean by polyatomic ions. And in the last, uh, at the end of the last video, I was pointing out some patterns with regard to charges. Now, with regard to charge, um, I did point out that if you know the charge on the monatomic ion, monatomic ion that is that the um, oxy ions are based on, uh, then you could figure out the charge or in, um, for a lot of the polyatomic ions. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So, for example, um, you, uh, you have, for example, uh, carbonate and, uh, well, no, not carbonate, let's try it, phosphate and phosphite, right? So I had mentioned at the end of the other video that if you remember what the charge on phosphide ion is from the periodic table, and the rule that if you are in groups 5, 6, 7, and 8, then the rule is that group number minus 8 gives you the charge, right? So there's a way to memorize from the periodic table. So if you remember that phosphide ion is negative 3, and both of these have phosphorus in them, then that will help you remember that those are negative 3 as well. Uh, the same thing goes with your chlorite and chlorate and hypochlorite because these are based on the halogen uh, chlorine and chlorine is in group seven and so because chlorine has a negative one charge from from the pattern on the periodic table um, then you can remember that these polyatomic ions or these oxy anions as they're called uh, also have a negative one. And you, you can also do that with the, the bromite and the bromate and so on. So there are those patterns. Also with the sulfate and sulfite, both of them have sulfur in them. So they're sulfur oxy anions. Um, if you remember that sulfur has a negative two charge, sulfide ion has a negative two charge, then you can remember that the sulfate and sulfite have negative two charges. Now, the last thing that I was trying to say was, um, what about if you have hydrogen, right, in, in the formula? Well, if you remember carbonate, right, so if you remember that carbonate has CO3 2 minus, then all you're going to do is you're going to add hydrogen to it, right? So the formula, if you remember the formula here, then all you're going to do for the hydrogen carbonate is to add hydrogen to the beginning of it, right? So this becomes HCO3. Now look at the charge. The charge is 2 minus 1 minus. So you can kind of remember this by remembering that hydrogen tends to have a plus charge to it, right? So we'll, we'll talk more about this when we get into acids. Um, but if you can remember a plus charge on your hydrogen, so that way when you add hydrogen to your polyatomic ion, you're adding a plus charge, and that plus charge will, will cancel out one of the negatives. So you go from a 2 minus to a minus, right? So you're going to go down in one, uh, one charge. 
Uh, you can see that also for uh, phosphate here. So phosphate has PO4 3 minus. If you add a hydrogen to it, then you get hydrogen phosphate. So you HPO4. But look at the charge. It goes down to 2 minus. So here you have 3 minus. It goes to 2 minus. What if you add another hydrogen? So instead of hydrogen, it's dihydrogen for two hydrogens. So we have dihydrogen phosphate. You have H2PO4, and now it goes down another one. So it goes to negative one uh, charge. So if you remember what the charge is on phosphate, then you can remember what the charge and the formula is for the hydrogen phosphate and the dihydrogen phosphate. Same thing goes for things like uh, sulfite and hydrogen sulfite or sulfate and hydrogen sulfate. You'll notice that all you're doing is you add a hydrogen to the formula and the charge drops down from two to one, okay? So these are just some of the tricks that you can use to help you remember the patterns and that'll help you remember what the, the, the formulas are and what the charges are. And this doesn't work for everything in on the list of um, polyatomic ions, but it does work for a lot of them. Um, but some of them you're just going to need to memorize. Like for example, you have your acetate ion, you're just going to need to remember that it's C2H3O2 with a minus charge. Or carbonate, you just need to remember that, that that's a, a CO3 with a 2 minus charge. Or hydroxide is an OH minus. Or you have cyanide, which is a CN minus. So those are just ones you just need to remember. And you could use note cards where you have on one side of the note card, you have the formula and the charge, and the, and the other side you're going to have the name. That is a perfectly way to memorize the periodic, um, to memorize the polyatomic ions. Um, you can go through your cards when you get up in the morning for 20 minutes and go to um, go over them before you go to bed for about 20 minutes. And then if you do that, you know, on a, on a consistent daily basis, you will, you will memorize the cards. Um, you will memorize the ions. Um, but here is, uh, knowing the patterns will help a lot as well. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, one of the things I want to point out as far as naming is some of these have dual names. There's two different names. So for example, hydrogen carbonate is also called bicarbonate. Um, you have, for example, hydrogen sulfide is also called bisulfite. Hydrogen sulfate also referred to as bisulfate, so keep that in mind. So um, different polyatomic ions can have uh, different names, but most of them have one name. Okay, I hope this was helpful. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. Um, if you uh, like the video, like it, share it. Um, uh, subscribe to the channel and make a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about the video. Is there anything else you want me to go over um, that I can go over in a future video? Um, hit the notification bell for more, for more videos when they come out. Thanks for joining me and have a good, uh, see you next time.